Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step how to declutter and organize your digital life. We spend so much time on a daily basis connected to the digital world, whether that's for work, keeping up with social media, or just relaxing and unwinding at the end of the day. A quick Google search suggests that the average person spends just around seven hours per day looking at screens. So it's no wonder that our digital space can become cluttered and overwhelming, increasing our stress levels and decreasing productivity and enjoyment. So here's my simple 10 step guide to decluttering your digital life so that you can enjoy your digital space with intention, efficiency, and positivity. The first thing we're going to talk about is the browser on your computer. Let's start there with a quick win. If you're the type of person who keeps tons of tabs open, go ahead and close the ones that you don't need and try to get in the habit of closing tabs as you go so you don't get visually overwhelmed the next time you take a look at your browser. Next, take a look at your bookmarked or favorites in the toolbar. This is a great way to keep your frequently used web pages close at hand and it's super helpful with efficiency, but only if everything on there is clearly labeled and relevant to you. So let's go ahead and delete any of those bookmarks that are no longer serving us and make sure we can easily recognize them for what they are. For step number two, let's look at your files and folders. This one works best if you take some time to initially create an effective system and then just work on maintaining that system. Think about how you want to organize your files and create a structured system for organizing everything. For me, for example, I have a personal file that uh, I keep folders within for things like healthcare, finances, and Toastmasters, which is a public speaking club I'm involved with. If we click here on finances, I have a separate folder called taxes, and then a separate folder within that for each tax year, where I keep everything related to my taxes for each year. This way, if I ever need to reference something down the road, it's super easy to find. I don't trust that I'll remember where I stored a random document from three years ago. So I try to make everything as logical and easy to find as possible. Next up, emails. We'll start with a quick win. Go to your deleted and junk folders and unsubscribe from any marketing emails that you no longer wish to receive. Take 20 seconds to do this now and it will save you the tiny stress of deleting the same marketing emails from the same brands every single morning. Next, similar to how we organize our files and folders is to organize your email folders so that everything can be easily sorted as you process your emails. If you're an Inbox Zero fan like me, go ahead and do that. There are tons of resources out there about how to organize your email inbox, but I'm just going to share one tip that was an absolute game changer for me. I created a folder in my email box called Completed Projects, which lives at the bottom of my folders. I'm extremely liberal about giving each project its own email folder. I have a separate folder for every trip I take, every short-term work project that I work on with other people, and this is where I store all the related emails for that specific project. Once the trip is over or the project is complete, I simply move the whole folder into this giant completed projects folder so that I can minimize them all and they don't clog up my visual space, but I can still go back and reference them if I need to. Once something really is no longer relevant though, I'll go ahead and delete it, but it's amazing the number of times this has come in handy. For step number four, we're going to change gears and look at your phone. Review all of your apps and delete the ones you no longer use. I like to sort my home screen to folders to help sort all my apps as well. I have one for finances, social media, my smart home, business, and entertainment. Using folders to organize your apps helps reduce visual overwhelm and just helps keep everything nice and tidy. Next, and here's a big one that can potentially save you lots of money. Take a look at your subscriptions and look at exactly how many apps you've been quietly paying $5 a month for and unsubscribe from the ones that are no longer needed. I did this recently and I was literally so surprised by how many things I was still paying for but wasn't even using anymore. I think the first time I did it, it freed up like $50 a month in unneeded subscription fees, which is insane. While we're looking at our phones, let's move on to step five, which is to clean up your social media. Take a look at all your social media accounts and delete any that you no longer use. Review your privacy settings and your passwords and unfollow any people or groups that are no longer relevant to you. Make sure your profile information is up to date and your pictures are the ones you still like and enjoy the benefits of your social media reset. Step number six is to declutter your digital media. This can make a huge difference in the amount of free space on your devices, which can improve the performance of everything. Go through your downloaded music, books, and videos, and delete anything that doesn't need to be there. You can always re-download it later if you need. Look through your pictures and delete the duplicates of bad photos. 
I'm the kind of person who will take three pictures of a cool tree so I can pick the right one, but then I still have three pictures of the same tree taking up space on my phone. So go ahead and clean that up and verify that all your pictures are being backed up to the cloud so you don't risk losing anything. Speaking of the cloud, step number seven is to declutter your cloud storage. Make sure that you still have enough space for everything you need to store and purchase more space if needed. Make sure all of your important things like your favorite pictures, projects, and files are backed up in the cloud and delete any unnecessary backups or things that are no longer relevant to free up your storage space for things you actually need. And just like some of the previous steps, make sure that your cloud space is neatly organized so you can actually find things in it. Moving right along to number eight is to review and update all your passwords. I don't personally use a password manager, but lots of people find this is a very helpful tool for keeping track of their passwords and updating everything with proper complexity. Regardless of the system you're using, whether it's a password manager or a sticky note, it's a good idea to update your passwords regularly. Don't use the same passwords for everything, and just in general to practice good password safety with regular maintenance. Step number nine is to review your inboxes. By this, I mean, where are the places where you're collecting stuff? For most of us, we collect stuff in our email inbox, voicemail, maybe the notes app on our phones, in a notebook, and maybe even notes scribble on sticky notes and thrown into our bags. No judgment here, I do it too. But take some time to empty all of your virtual and physical inboxes and have a plan to process everything. If you find that you're collecting stuff in too many different places, consider consolidating so that you're able to trust that you have a safe place to collect input that you will regularly check. And finally, step number 10 is to physically declutter your digital life. I use the internet every day, and I ask Alexa to do things for me all the time. So show these guys a little love in return and go dust off your internet router and any other smart devices around the house. Make sure all your technology is working well for you and update things as needed. Remember that box full of cord spaghetti, full of old cords and charging cables that you might need someday? Go through that box and get rid of the old cords and cables that are obsolete or that you don't need anymore. I recently did this at my mom's house and there were literally three and a half inch floppy disks in a box. Like, yeah, it's probably time to get rid of those. And those are my 10 steps to decluttering your digital life. I hope you found this helpful and at least creating a plan for how to tackle your digital decluttering. I don't recommend doing all of this at one time since that's a lot, but try doing it step by step at your leisure and over time things will start to come together until you get to maintenance mode. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy the video I made about how to organize your phone to optimize your productivity. So definitely check that one out if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.